We've got our fluid roughed out, but we're still in a sort of preview mode because we've got fairly low settings for our container. So I'll go back up to the very top and increase the base resolution to maybe 60. And also I'll increase the size of the container just a little bit to 6, 20, and 6, just to give it a little bit more breathing room. And watching my frames per second, you'll see that it's not quite running at real time now. It's running at about 15 frames a second, but this is looking a lot nicer. And if I do a render of that, we'll see we're starting to get a pretty decent looking plume of flame. If we're happy with the movement, then we can go ahead and make a cache. So just like particles or rigid body dynamics, we can bake the simulation with a fluid end cache. So I'll set my overall timeline first to let's make it just 10 seconds or 240 frames. And then rewind, play back until the simulation is where I want it to be. And if I like what it's doing on this frame, I'll go ahead and set its initial state. Fluid effects, set initial state. And you'll notice that there's a handy clear initial state menu item directly below it. So you can erase the initial state if you need to. Go ahead and hit that. And then rewind to frame one. And that's what you see on frame one. So the simulation is already fully running on frame one. And at this point, I can go ahead and do the cache. Fluid end cache, create new cache. Let's go to the options. And you'll see that it will create a cache directory in the current project's data folder. And it's just going to use the current scene file name to create a new folder. So my current scene is Fluid's Rocket 05. So it'll create a new folder, and inside there, there will be some cache files. And by default, it will create one file per frame of animation. And also by default, it will use your time slider to determine how much cache to build. There we go. Click Create. It starts from frame 1. And it will take a moment for it to create the cache files. But once that's done, then we'll be able to parent the container to another object and then animate it normally and we'll be able to get the effect of the rocket flying through space. So now I've got a cache built. Pretty cool. I'll tap the space bar to go back to four viewport layout and I'll open up the outliner as well, window outliner. I just want to link this fluid container and its child, which is the emitter, to the rocket launch control. So I want to link Fluid1 to Rocket Launch Control, which is this little circle here. So Fluid1 is going to be the child. And I'll hold down Control. And Rocket Launch Control is going to be the parent. And I'll press the P key. And now you'll see Fluid1 is a child of Rocket Launch Control. So my rocket layer is currently referenced. So I'll close my attribute editor, go back to the display layers, and unreference the rocket layer. So I can select that and do some quick animation. I can have the fluid visible in my viewport while I animate or not, because the fluid layer can also be toggled on and off. OK, cool. So I'll grab the Move tool, and I will move the control object off screen. Maybe I'll do this in the front view while I observe in the camera view here. Let's move it off screen. Grab the rotate tool, turn it. And I'll go ahead and press the S key. That'll key all of the channels, but I can go back and delete the static channels later. I can grab the move tool. As you notice, the move tool is oriented with the world, but I can double click on the move tool and open the tool settings and choose Object. And now you'll see the manipulators lined up with that NURBS curve. Go down to later point in time, frame 240. Pull that forward and out of frame completely. Then press S. And now I can scrub through in any view. Maximize the camera view. Hit Alt-B so I can see it on a black background. Maybe I'll turn off the grid too. Sort of preview.
And that's basically it. I mean, I can go back and maybe delete these static channels, edit, delete all by type static channels, just so I have less going on in my animation, should I choose to change it. I just want to make a couple of artistic adjustments to the shading and rendering for the fluid shape. So back in the fluid shape node, in the incandescence, I've changed the brightest color to more of a white rather than a saturated yellow. And also, I can give it a little bit of glow, which is being driven from the same shader glow node that is applying glow to the stars. So here's a previously rendered image with no glow. I'll render that same frame again. So we can have a really good comparison of no glow versus glow. Store that image. I give it a glow intensity of 0.18, pretty low. And now you'll see that the fire is blasting out very bright. And I can adjust that if I want, but I think I'm pretty good to go. I'm going to go ahead and do a final batch render of this. We cover the batch rendering process in the particle wand exercise. So if you're not familiar with batch rendering, then go and look at that particle exercise. Otherwise, we've finished here. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about Maya particles and fluids. And watch for more video tutorials at digitalartsguild.com.